Let's turn this shot into this final image by using Lightroom's masking tools to emphasize the contrast of this scene. As always, you can follow along by downloading the RAW file from the link in the description. And now let's begin. As always, we are starting with the basic adjustments to set up the exposure of this shot. So let's expand the basic panel. I'm not going to change the profile this time. I want to start with the exposure right away. That means what I'm going to do first is I want to make the base image a little bit darker by bringing down the exposure. Doing this will reveal more details in the sky. I want to keep on making the scene darker by bringing down the shadows. And as I do these adjustments, I always pay close attention to the histogram because we don't want to introduce any clipping in the darker or in the brighter areas. So that's really, really important. So far, the histogram is looking good. However, I can further boost the base contrast of the image by bringing down the blacks very carefully, just like this. Of course, we can also go into the other direction, making the brighter parts of the image even brighter. So let me play around with the highlights and bring them up. Again, I'm looking closely on the histogram, but even if I bring up the highlights all the way, you can see we still have no clipping in the image whatsoever. So that's already a pretty nice way of boosting the base contrast. Let's also bring up the whites. Here we need to be a little bit more careful to not introduce any clipping, but we can go quite high here as well. So right around here looks good. I think that's looking decent for the base exposure. Now the next step is to work on the white balance since at this point I have a better idea of what the image looks like. So we can clearly see a heavy blue color cast. This is easily fixed using the temperature slider and I'm going to bring it up quite a bit. Again, taking a look at the histogram, you can see we are actively reducing the blue color cast as we are aligning the colored peaks up in the histogram. This would be a pretty neutral white balance. However, I don't want to go as far. So let's tone it down a bit. I want to have some blue tones left on the scene. So let's go with something like this. I also want this image to look sharp and clear. So I'm going to bring up the texture, which will sharpen the details of the image. And I'm going to bring up the clarity, which will boost the midtones contrast a bit. Okay, finally, let's bring up the vibrance. And right here we have the image with the base adjustments applied. So let's compare it to before real quick. You can see a huge difference already. The exposure looks much better. The white balance is much better as well. Now we can target a few areas more specifically to further improve the contrast of the scene. And of course, we're going to do that with masking. So let's go into the masking panel. There are two areas that are really, really important. Of course, we have the subject in the foreground, which naturally is a little bit brighter. Then we have the dark dramatic sky in the back, which is super dark. And these areas are the ones I want to emphasize. So let me start with the background. I'm using a simple linear gradient and I'm going to drag it down like this, covering pretty much the whole sky with a rather soft edge at the bottom here. Of course, we only want to affect the background with the sky, not the subject. So what we need to do is to click on subject and choose select subject. This way we get rid of the church from the mask for the background. Then we need to further adjust this mask because I want to specifically target the darker parts of the sky, not the brighter ones. So again, click on subject and we're going to choose a linear gradient with which we're going to take out the top part of the sky because this part of the sky is a little bit brighter. So let's see, I think this should look pretty good. Let's deactivate the mask overlay for a minute. And all I'm going to do to improve the contrast is I'm going to make the darker parts darker simply by lowering the exposure. I'm also going to increase the contrast a little further and let's head down into the effects. I do want to bring up the clarity just a notch, which will further push the midtones contrast of this area. And what I want to do as well is to make these dark clouds look a little bit colder. So I'm going to bring down the white balance temperature here, just like that. And with just one mask, we dramatically improved the contrast of the scene. Let me deactivate this to show you the difference from before to after. This is a huge difference already. 
But of course, we can tweak things a little further. Let's work on the subject. Let's create a new mask and choose Select Subject. Perfect. Now, of course, we don't want to make this darker. Instead, we want to make it a little bit brighter to make it pop in front of the dark background. So I'm going to bring up the exposure. I really don't want to overdo it. And I also don't want to introduce any clipping. So be really, really careful here since the white walls of this church are already kind of bright. Of course, we can not only use the contrast to make things brighter. I can also use the white slider again. Let's bring it up very gently. Maybe even add some contrast. This will help make the brighter areas of the subject brighter, but it will also make the darker areas like these windows darker. Just giving it a little bit more punch this way. Okay, looking good so far. I also want to make the, make the subject a little sharper by introducing more texture. And let's bring up the clarity as well, just a little bit like this. Now this mask won't have such a big impact than the previous one, but still let me deactivate it. So that's the subject from before to after with the mask applied. You can see the whites are a lot more glowing than before. I think that looks really, really good. Now there is one more thing I wanna do on the subject. And for that, I wanna specifically target the four windows in the front. Let me create a new object selection mask right here. And of course, we want to make sure the rectangle select mode is active because it's just a little more precise. And then all we need to do is draw a rectangle around the first window. Since we want to target all these windows, I'm going to add another objects mask and just add the second window. And I'm working my way through the image by doing this. So let's add another objects mask target the third window and let's do this one last time. All right, that looks good. Let's again deactivate the overlay and let's start working on these windows. I want to start by making them look sharper and clearer using a lot of texture and a lot of clarity as well. This will just make these windows pop and I quite like how this looks. I'm also going to drop the white balance temperature introducing more of a blue color cast on these window reflections. Of course, I don't want the colors to be too strong in here. So to fix that, I'm going to bring down the saturation as well, just a little bit. Okay, looking much better already. Now I want to introduce contrast and I'm doing this by, in by increasing the highlights all the way up, which will just target the brighter tones of these windows. And at the same time, I'm going to bring down the shadows a little bit. I'm not going to drop them too crazy. Otherwise there might be some clipping getting involved in here, which I don't like. Okay, I think we could also bring up the whites again, targeting the brighter tones of these windows. And then let's also bring down the blacks very gently. Wonderful, this is looking great. Let me turn off this mask so you can see what this will do to the image from before, kind of flat at this point to after. Much more interesting and we're already done with the masking. So let me turn off all the masks we created. This was our base image and that's the image after the masking adjustments. You see, we have only three masks applied and it makes a huge difference if you know which area you need to change in order to boost the contrast of a scene. So now that we are done with the masking, of course, we can still do a little bit of color grading. Since this is a almost pure white window scene, there is not much going on. Still, let's open up the color mixer. First, I want to head into the hue tab here. I want to slightly alter the blue tones, giving them more of a cyan color tone. And I'm doing this by using the blue slider and slightly bringing it to the left. That's just a personal thing. I think it looks better this way. Then let's head over into the saturation tab. The roof of this church might be a bit too red. So I'm going to bring down the red saturation to balance this a little more. And instead I'm going to bring up the blue saturation because I really love the blue tones of this image. So let's make the storm in the back look more dramatic by bringing up, up the saturation like this. Perfect. Then let's also head into the calibration tab. That's just something I always do for my images to bring down the blue primary hue. Again, this will turn the blue tones more into a aqua color tone. I think it looks great. I also want to boost the saturation here, making the colors pop a little more. And that's it for the color grading. 
Of course, we're going to sharpen this image in the details tab. Here, I'm going to bring down the radius, increase the details all the way up, hold down the Alt key while we're applying some masking. You can also see some sensor spots going on in this image. And I want to bring up the amount of sharpening. Done. And at this point, it's time to clean up the shot. What I want to do first is to head into the transform tab and I want to fix the lens distortion. You can see the vertical lines are kind of leaning towards each other. You can fix that by using the vertical slider in the transform panel and carefully bring them down like this until all these lines look straight again. Perfect. And we need to crop the image afterwards so the gap will be closed at the bottom. Perfect. Now for the sensor spots, I'm using the remove tool here. I'm choosing the heal mode and make sure to click on visualize spots. So we have an easier time finding all these sensor spots. And then I'm just starting to brush over all of these. All right, and there we have the finished image. So I hope this little video was interesting and will help you with your future images in regards of contrast. If you want to add anything or if you have any questions left, let me know in the comments and thank you so much for watching this video.